Da, da. Okay. You're three, including this. This is part of the video. <laughs> yeah, three, three, two, one. So welcome. This is the first episode. Why just standing here? We're like, yeah, I know. Uh, first episode. Not that they're going to be numbered or anything. <laughs> no. Of six versus eight. I'm Mr. Six. I'm Mr. Eight. Right. And the whole um, idea behind this uh, YouTube channel is I'm going to take my six cylinder cars and I'm going to try to beat him in his eight cylinder cars for the most part. Uh, we do have, I do have, uh, eventually we'll have an eight cylinder vehicle. Yeah. And we'll get in that to a minute. And, and I'll eventually have a, a six cylinder vehicle, vehicle. So, so we are going to do a little crossing <laughs> uh, just to try the dark side, but uh, I think it'll be really fun. Yeah. What I definitely want to do with this channel first and foremost is kind of give factual data. So we're lucky in town to have access to a drag strip. Yeah. We're still looking for a road course that's somewhat in our vicinity, but there, there is an option. It's just really, really expensive. Like, or make our own. <laughs> or, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Off-roading, definitely. But um, there's a lot of dinos in town. Um, so as we do stuff, we're definitely going to you know, confirm a lot of information. We have vehicle scales, so mm -hmm. we're trying to you know, lighten a vehicle. We yep. can actually weigh it to know exactly what we're doing. So, yep. so as we do stuff, I definitely want to provide factual information as much as I can. By no means are we experts. We're just two dudes trying to do the best we can with the tools we have. <laughs> two um, amateurs. Yes. 100%. <laughs> so uh, in this episode, we're going to go through all our different project vehicles. So it should be fun. Um, right now, he's down probably one. You probably need at least one more. But yeah, I need it, at least one. It'll get there. Um, <laughs> Maybe so, two or three. <laughs> yeah. With that said, let's start showing off some cars. <laughs> so first is this 2016 Cadillac ATS-V. Um, for the people that don't know, it comes with a LF4 3.6 twin turbo, eight speed automatic. Titanium did, connecting rods. <laughs> I, I did not get the, um, you're definitely not in the shot. I'm not? No. Uh, I don't know. Um, so the plans for this, are fast as fuck. I, don't, I think that's pretty much it. So well, hold on. It's, first, it's daily driver. Yes. So this one's probably the most daily driver of them all. Um, I want to keep this something I can take out on date night, take the wife out, go do some stuff, do a long road trip, um, but still fast as fuck. So eventually flex fuel conversion. So this thing can run on an E85 or gas. Um, Modified yep. turbos, just upgrades, downpipes, exhaust. I mean, it's pretty much 100% factory at this point. We haven't done anything. I just picked it up a little while ago. So I'm actually really excited. I've been driving this for the last couple of weeks, uh, enjoying it. It is quick. It is fun. Um, I definitely want to do some cosmetic upgrades, some carbon bits. So we're, you're definitely going to see all that on this channel. Yep. Uh, I'm not big, a huge interior guy. I know a lot of people go crazy modifying their interiors, I think this is the interior and sound system. Uh, <laughs> the interior and sound system in this um, is completely fine for me, at least. It's that um, Bose. Uh, more about the uh, quick bits and the appearance than anything else. But uh, really fun car. It definitely doesn't make it enough cool turbo noises yet. So that's the one thing that you, you <laughs> can hardly hear the turbos. <laughs> And the exhaust is quiet. I do love having the selective mode exhaust on this where you put it in track mode or the valves open up and you can hear it. But when you want to be quiet, yeah. you hit a button and you're in comfort mode and, and the car quiets down. So it's, it's basically a full bolt-on car where literally you can get a lot, yeah. a lot of power on bolt-ons. I would say deep here with this elevation we have, I would say deep tens um, after I'm done, which is still, I mean, for an everyday driver getting a low 10 second car, high nine second car. Yeah. I mean, I think that's great. So, yeah. ta da! Drive it to the track and yeah. bring it home. Race it, bring it home. Yeah. It definitely needs better tires right now. It has all season Michelins on it, and you mash it. I don't care. It could be dry as, dry as hell. It doesn't matter. Yep. She gets sideways like, too easily, <laughs> which I love to some point. But when yeah. there's times you're on the highway and you're trying to pass somebody and she gets squirrely on you, it's definitely. 
Unpredictable oversteer is not fun. No. Predictable um, oversteer is a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. Another big thing, um, it definitely ha has a lot of like rock chips and kind of these headlights have seen better days. So I might replace a lot of stuff. Um, we'll see. Heat extractor. Yeah. There's, there's oh. definitely a lot of room for improvement, but that is the 2016. So this is one of mine, obviously, because it's a six banger. Yep. Um, and then we'll show off the next one. Yeah. Boom. Ta-da! It's gonna be like poof, pop, poof. Yeah. Uh, so next up is a 2001 uh, 911 Turbo. Uh, I absolutely love this car. She's very dirty, just because I haven't driven her in a hot minute because she needs a new clutch, and I want to buy a very expensive clutch. Uh, there's a company. What's it called? Promotive. That makes a beautiful twin disc, but it is like four thousand dollars. Four thousand dollars. It is a very expensive clutch. <laughs> I get it. Part of it's the Porsche tax. Part of it is because it's. Part of it, I say about like eighty percent is Porsche. Well, yeah, there's a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of Porsche tax. But um, the reason I love this, to me, this is one of probably the last generation you can get that still is kind of like mechanical and visceral. And don't get me wrong, it's got you know traction control and some shit. It's not like a first gen Viper or anything. Yeah. But the 997.1, so the 997.1 turbo, um, got a little bit better, mm -hmm. but a little bit more computerish, right? And then by the 997.2, that's where Porsche really started. It's kind of like um, the most raw, like there's no computer. Well, there's there's definitely a lot more raw, yeah, but yeah. this is like the, the latest you can get of that raw feel, yeah. right? Where you still get some of that classic Porsche, but some kind of like drivability, fuel injection, yeah. water cooled, even though some people, oh, Water cooled. Um, Water cooled. They do yeah. that with everything. I think that we'll get over it. Obviously, this is the generation with the ugly headlights that nobody loves. I personally think they look amazing, but a lot of purists uh, absolutely hate the headlights. They won't be looking at the headlights. They'll be looking at the taillights. Exactly. And the ass end <laughs> on this car is beautiful. Um, plans for this car. Uh, to be honest, everything? <laughs> that sounds stupid. LS swap. Uh, no, 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 no. Never. I would never... You know, we're wrong. I'm not one of those purists that think you can't do shit like that. But if you have a good car and a good platform, yeah. I don't find the need to. Uh -huh. I would never. So this has what's called a Mesger engine. Uh, it's named after the guy who designed it. Um, this was in their a, a version of this engine was in their GT1 like a Le Mans car or some shit. Um, mm -hmm. I got, some I'm race not, car. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a huge Porsche guy to be. I mean, I am a Porsche guy, but I'm not like a history Porsche buff. But great engine. It's got a six-speed manual in it, which is really fun. All-wheel drive. A lot of people hate on the all-wheel drive system because it's a um, passive system where it's just basically got a, how do I put it? It's just like, it's kind of like a, a limited slip almost. Yeah. Or when it senses slip, uh, viscous coupler, that's the word I'm looking for. So it's got a vis viscous coupler center differential where when it senses slip, that's when it will send power to the front um, a lot of people, when it wants to, it'll be all-wheel drive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people hate on it. Um, I don't actually think that's bad. You know, drive in the rear-wheel drive cars, I can definitely feel the all-wheel driveness in there. Some people, mm -hmm. not so much, or they yeah. don't feel not so much. But already, I've done a few upgrades. It has a tune. It's running about 1.1 bar, which is like what, 15, 16 psi. I fucking hate. That's the only thing I, I, I hate. <laughs> is that everything's you know not everything. There's like a few things that are like. <laughs> either misspelled or in metric, right? So this, <laughs> the car reads bar, which, you know, obviously America, kilometers, you know, <laughs> it's got miles per hour, but it, it's, uh, it does piss me off. Yeah, like, yeah. What is this in PSI? I, yeah. lived, I lived my whole life on boost on PSI. <laughs> I don't know what your bar system is, but it's running 1.1 bar. It's got upgraded intercoolers, uh, upgraded tires. I spaced the wheels out. I think they have 10 millimeter or 15 millimeter spacers and they have, um, Toyo R triple eight R's. Yeah, yeah. I believe it's been a while since I put these things yep. on. Triple eights. You can't get wrong yeah. with triple eights. No, I mean, the, the handling is amazing. You mash it, the car goes. Yep. And you did the brakes on it too. Yeah. I just changed the brakes. They're still, they're all factory. Yep. Nothing's different. Uh, factory brakes. Oh, and it has a sole exhaust. Um, and then a air filter 
just an air filter change uh, with a high flow air filter. Eventually this thing will get, uh, I haven't decided whether I want to go upgraded factory size turbo. So these come with K16s and they make a hybrid turbo that's supposed to, you know, give you more power, but still spool really good. And yep. the next size up is K24s, which the turbo S's came with, um, which give you more top end at the sacrifice of a little bit of spool. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. If I ever blow this motor, I definitely want to go Stroker. There's a company. <coughs> that, no. <laughs> that same company, Promotive, they also do great Stroker motors in these things. So instead of... Um, what would the... It wouldn't be 4 liter. It'd be more, right? 4.2 or something? Well, you could go with like 4. To, basically, not the sky's the limit, but usually yeah. in that range. Um, but yeah, a lot of good plants. I love this car. Fastest. So I have taken this to the track. Fastest I've been so far. In the southwest, my elevation's 2,000 feet above sea level, yeah, and yeah. I'm not the best driver, so I am not a race car driver. Um, I ran an 11.9. Uh, what was my mile an hour? I have the slips up here. Mm. <clears throat> uh, at 119 miles an hour. So if I plug that into the internet, that's probably yeah. going to tell me it's good for like a mid-11 or some shit like that. Um, but again, really fast car. It needs a clutch. I might need a transmission rebuild, I don't know yet, but the best part is, is one of the best, uh, I think this is a G50, what it's called, I think Porsche calls this the G50, the transmission, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, one of the best rebuilders is actually here local to us. Yeah. So I got, I lucked out really hard on that one. And then I need to upgrade my fuel system, I think. It has a slight hesitation every once in a while, I think it's fuel related, so I gotta go through it. So it needs a little bit of work. Still love this car. Only 60-ish thousand miles, so it's still low miles. It's not bad. Uh, holds its value for the most part until yeah. I fuck that up. Um, suspension <laughs> so, is good. It handles great. For Everything's factory suspension-wise, and it still handles phenomenal. So um, a lot of good things to come with this car. Um, you're going to see me do a, a I think, go a faster. The ATS-V will probably still be faster in a straight line. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think this is... This has the potential to have a beat, I honestly think. I don't know. I think, I think you could turn this up way more. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. We're going to see. Because that's the best part of also about this channel is I'm also racing, Learning. My, yeah, yeah. I'm racing my other cars plus this, this Joker right here where uh, we'll see which cars actually do the best yeah. um, and we'll go from there. On to the next car. On to the next car. Bye bye. Bye bye. Um, so next is 99 Jeep Cherokee. I've had this car the longest. Oh, shit, when the f that was 2006. I bought it with like 58,000 miles. It now has like 160,000 miles. So uh, she has been tried and true. Yeah. Same um, motor. Have not blown it up yet, which is a plus. <laughs> yet. It helps that it doesn't put out any horsepower or any real horsepower. <laughs> um, I think these things are factory rated at like 190 and then 210 pound feet of torque. Put some nitrous on it. Uh, well, it's going to get some stuff. Um, so I do have a lot done to this. I mean, it would probably take me to forever to list all the stuff, but basically four inch suspension lift, uh, 33s, they're metric. So I think they're 32 and a half, 33s or 33 and a half. I forgot. Metric. Um, you know, control arms, track bar. Uh, I got it re-geared to 456s, which I went a little too steep on the gears. So <laughs> she she's a little she sits a little high RPM wise on the highway. That's fine. But it's okay. Interior is pretty much stock minus a, a radio, and we'll I'll pan around the camera later. <clears throat> um, Genrite. Fuel tank, you know, flares, spacers, wheels. You should edit in like a before picture and then this. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, so what are we going to do with this thing? So definitely I want to do a stroker on this. So there's a lot of companies that make stroker kits. One of them goes even as far as making it a five liter from a four liter. Really? Yes. So That much? But then supposedly, you know, people like it has a hard time keeping it cool. Um, yeah. So we'll see. So 4.6 is the kind of common stroker all the way up to five liters. And then maybe some boost. 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 So uh, there is, I do already have an M90 supercharger for this from a Ford Thunderbird. 
because you can remote mount them. Um, yep. So I already have it. It's going to go on a different vehicle, but we'll see if uh, it works out for that one. Also, a lot of guys are starting to boost this now. The computer, this is a 99, so it can be programmed without having to do any piggyback type of BS. But again, it's not cheap. Yeah. So we'll see. There's a couple different things. That I will be sticking with the, the Jeep motor in this. So this is not getting a V8 swap. <laughs> Alas. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but... Uh, so I would say a lot of good things. Uh, she is my workhorse. Yeah. Like she always starts. Right now I'm fighting a driveline vibration problem, I believe. Um, it's kind of pinion angle related with... Um, it's probably just pinion angle, I would think. We'll see. But so I'm going to do some diagnosing fixed. soon. I'm going to remove the front drive shaft, make sure my rear pinion angle, see if I get any, still get any uh, vibes. Yep if that takes it away so then I know it's in the front somewhere and then we're going to start troubleshooting from there. So I did take a lot of the, what's the word I'm looking for? Not caster, not camber. I took a lot of the caster, it is caster. So I try to set the front pinion angle perfect, but then I removed too much caster so she wanders a little bit. So I got to put some caster back and, and that could be the problem right there. So I also got to buy some tools so I can do my own at home alignment. Or Suspension tuning. I can get it at least close. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, this will be fun. We'll do some off-roading videos uh, and go from there. Let's go wheeling. Yeah, America. <laughs> I mean, we gotta stop. We gotta come up with something different. I know, okay. Right? This, uh, God, we're so stupid. <laughs> this is a 1990 Jeep Comanche. It has a kind of the same four liter that the other Jeep has. The other one's a little bit more modernized. The fuel injection on this one's called the Renix or Renix, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Whatever. Um, system, <laughs> four speed. The other, I didn't say on the last one, but the, the Red Cherokee is uh, four speed automatic. This is a four speed automatic, four wheel drive and both. This thing, so unfortunately. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, this is going to get a V8 swamp. LS. This is going to get uh, an LQ9. I'll, I'll show you guys in a minute. So. Six liter. We can, we hold on, we can cut to show in the LQ9 for a second. Yeah. Okay, now we're back. No, now we're back. And um, <laughs> <clears throat> basically the, the route I'm going for this is, and this is going to sound really weird because they're almost opposing things, is a overlanding street truck. <laughs> I know, it sounds stupid, right? You're like, what the fuck? Is it doesn't this? sound stupid because you have donks. True, no we're wrong. Well, it's not as stupid as, uh, I'm not, I don't want to hate on other people's car culture. Yeah. Like, do, do you. I, don't I care mean, I mean, the, you can Minus get... the stance guys. Yeah. I'm, oh, Adam, the stance guys all shit on them all the day. <laughs> all day. <laughs> but I want to build a, um, an overland. So I want this thing to still be able to go off road, right? So it's still going to have a, I know right now it sits like shit. Like, it's yeah. literally sitting probably an inch and a half higher. Kind of squatted, yeah. And there's not even anything, there's, like, there's really nothing in the back. No, there ain't. Like a battery and two Squatted. Drivers. I know. So uh, this isn't on purpose. We're not trying to do the California or no, it was the Carolina. Car Carolina? Carolina squad or yeah, whatever? Yeah, the Carolina yeah. squad. No, that's not on purpose. So that will be fixed. <laughs> <laughs> but this is going to be an overlanding street truck. So what, you know basically what I'm going for? I think I can sum it up. If I can copy a 392 Wrangler. Yeah. Right? I want something that can still go off road. I want something that's fast and I want something that can, you know, put yep. the power down where I'm not doing burnouts constantly. So to do that, I sourced a LQ9 out of a 2006 Cadillac Escalade EUV or some shit like that. The really big one. ESV. ESV. Um, it comes with obviously the LQ9, 6 liter V8, a 4L65E, which is still trash. It will eventually be upgraded to the 4L80. And then the kind of the, the piece that makes it all work is the NV149. So that transfer case is a full-time all-wheel drive transfer case. It has, it comes with a, vi a viscous coupler in it. So it can send 100% of the power front or back, whatever is mm -hmm. needed. Um, it's probably not the best transfer case for off-road, but my way to get around that is to run a locker in the back and then a yep. really tight limited slip in, in the, the front. front where 
Because basically what happens is if I didn't run, if I ran open diffs, it doesn't matter where it would send power to, you still wouldn't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You, would, you would be stuck, right? Yep. Um, kind of like even any four wheel drive system yeah. where once you get two tires in the air, you're screwed. Screwed. Um, so with the locker in the back, that'll at least help where the back's always got traction. Yep. And then... Locker. Yeah. And, but then the good thing about that is I always have traction on the street too. So yep. even normal driving, I'll be able to mash it and uh, actually get traction pretty good. So this is also going to kind of get a restorations of sorts. So it looks pretty crap now. God, this, the paint job is uh, pretty rough on this. Like the sun has just done its damage. But I've, I have a couple parts Cherokees. We're going to bring this thing back to life. It's going to get pretty much new everything and, and it's going to be a resto mod. So it's, it's going to be really cool. You're going to help. You're going to come along with this journey of taking this, this Comanche back to life. <laughs> I have a soft spot for mini trucks. Yeah. I love mini trucks. You're, you're definitely, trucks. you're going to help. You're going to be here in this garage. You're going to help be helping us or at least laughing at us. When yes. We, uh, and then saying how, how stupid we are for doing what we're doing. <laughs> like, why are you spending so much money on Comanche? Because I can. Because I can. Um, that's pretty much, that is it for my running vehicles. Yep. <laughs> Uh, go. I gotta. I, we gotta figure out something for between cuts. <laughs> I should just pop like, out of the engine bay. Yeah. Boop. <laughs> um, that actually is not bad. <laughs> so this is mine. This is my first vehicle that doesn't run. I have two. He has one. Um, this is a 1985 Buick Grand National. I bought this a while back, and this has unfortunately turned into while you're in there. You know, where it was one thing, while you're in there, it was another thing. And yeah. now this thing's getting a mild kind of like frame off. I don't even want to yeah. use that because it's technically not. But I'm going to, once I have some time and money, I'm really going to go through this car uh, 100%. So I already have the 3.8 liter in the back. Um, I've already, I didn't rebuild it, but I resealed it. So I put new head gaskets on it, uh, cleaned the heads up. Uh, bunch of different mods. Oh, another big thing. So these 85s came non-intercooled. I ended up finding, which knowing what I know now, I kind of wish I didn't, even though it's a shitty grandma's car. Um, the turbo V6 that came in these obviously came in the Regal, came in the T-Type. So it came in the, the turbo T, depending on the years, turbo T, T-Type, and Grand National. Mm -hmm. Well, the very last year in 87, they did a Buick Regal Limited. And 100% it looked like grandma's car. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to tell that it was a turbo car. Like it had a bench seat, it had a column shifter, like it was a hundred, and they were actually really rare because most people when you're, when you're opting for the engine didn't get that in the shape yeah, of yeah. grandma Regal. They opted for at least the T-Type or the Turbo T, whatever mm -hmm. year, or you know the Grand National. So I found one of those on eBay being sold pretty cheap and I stripped the motor out of it and I have it in the back, it's gonna go in this. My big plans for this, this is more of a restoration also, so I'm gonna take my time with it. But also, I will never V8 swap this, and for the people who do, more power to you. Hey, it's fine. I like to kind of keep the heart and soul of this little dinky V6 beating up on V8s. <laughs> my big, big thing. I mean, the, that's the whole point of the Grand National. Yes, like that's what it's claimed to famous, right? Yeah. Small motor back in the day beating up or being faster than a Ferrari. The GNX faster than a Ferrari yep. when it came out and all that good jazz. With that being said, what I really want to do is stick, I think it's called the LV1 or LV3. It's the 4.3 liter that comes in the Silverados and the Chevy Vans. Um, it's basically a Gen 5 V8 with two cylinders lopped off, right? So it's not like the shitty 4.3s back in the day, the, the old crappy Vortec 4.3s. Yeah. This, as they flow great, they basically have a Gen 5 head, again, yep. with a cylinder missing. Yep. Um, you can boost them to King to Come. They put out great power. There's a couple companies just starting to kind of play with these LV3s and LV1s. They're super cheap at the wrecking yard. Um, I'm definitely, eventually, you're going to probably stick one of those in there. So that way I can kind of have modern fuel injection, yep. modern technology. I mean, hell, you could probably even keep the, you know, the, all the variable crap and DOD and all that kind yep. of crap, which I probably won't, but something that gets decent gas that mileage. The, the internals are very, like the, at least the connecting rocks are the same as a V8. I mean, I wouldn't, I think there literally is the, yeah. the I'm gonna assume the crank is different just because it's gotta be balanced differently because, yeah, yeah. you know, it's obviously missing two cylinders, but uh, there was a test who, 
there was, I think it's SDPC, I'm probably saying that wrong and I apologize if I am, but they did a dyno test where they boosted one and they literally used the V8 headers and then just blocked off the ports. Yeah. Like it was that kind of uh, crazy how easily the V8 parts fit on the V6 if they can. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually really excited that for eventually, but I am gonna take the factory 3.8 from the 87, uh, kind of push it to its limits and then eventually when I either get sick and tired of messing with old technology um, or I want something crazier, bigger, better, or different, I'll probably swap in that 4.3, but the body's pretty clean. It needs a couple of touch up here and there, a few scratches along the way. Maybe some of them I done by accident. And um, <laughs> the interior's in actually really, really good shape. It's kind of the claim to fame to this car when I bought it is that even though it had the shittier non-intercooled 3.8 or you know 38 not 3800 3.8 mm -hmm. um, the the body was so clean and the interior was so well kept that even though it had the motor i didn't want i had to grab it yep. um, i think back in the day i paid like 10 for this right and obviously it's probably a lot more now yeah with a good running example it's definitely more and i don't ever plan on selling it but it is kind of nice to know you scored a deal, right? Yeah, it's and, a classic. Uh, it's definitely it's, a classic that can't get rid of. Yeah, no, definitely. No, and I don't want to mod it so crazy where it loses that classic vibe. Hence yep. why I don't want to go, you know, LS or anything like that, but. Put a GTR engine in it. No, no GTR engine. Three, that, that's 3.8, it's still 3.8. That's, that's a Photoshop, that thing all over <laughs> the internet. So with that being said, let's, do you want to do a walking around to the back? Yeah. Cool. Kind of look at some of our other parts. So last but not least is this, 2000 i think 2000 or 2001 jeep cherokee um this is my i don't give a shit about cherokee so i already chopped off the b pillar i'm gonna eventually probably chop off the roof from here and then follow this body line here turn this into like a shitty little mini truck type thing uh, it's gonna get a cage i'm gonna my main intent is to put 35s with no lift so a lot of bodies getting churned out um <laughs> and still somehow make it road legal. So I, I looked up the local laws here. I know exactly what I absolutely need to keep it road legal. You know, wipers, windshield, horn lights, seatbelts, uh, certain height, uh, headlight clearance and all that kind of jazz. So that way when I eventually get stopped, um, everything will be legit. But besides that, this is gonna be a fun, oh, also for the power plant um, over there, I have a red maroon, 2001 Jeep Cherokee that the motor is going to get pulled from that and that'll end up going in this and then it will get boosted so I already have a supercharger kit for it pretty much right away uh supercharger is going on it and then we're going to break shit and melt things and it's going to be great so <laughs> how's it going everybody quick update finally started putting everything together and definitely have way too much footage for one episode I don't want to bore anybody with a 40 minute episode so with that being said I'm going to chop up the intro episode into two parts first part will be all my project cars um, the second part will be all Mr. H Project Cars. So please check out the second episode. Um, that way you can see what I'll be fighting against. So thanks for sticking around. Later.